Let's build a professional cornhole board. But you're not gonna need a bunch of fancy tools. Two power tools and a bunch of other just simple tools. This is the ultimate building on a budget project. I like to do projects where the average person with just a couple power tools can still build really nice things. So let's get started. The dimensions of a cornhole board are 24 by 48 inches and they're three to four inches tall. So what I'm doing here, I set up that Pittsburgh clamp, got it at Harbor Freight for 20 bucks. It allows you to make up to 50 inch ribs, perfectly straight lines. So I cut the top at exactly 24 by 48. And then I cut a bunch of two and one quarter inch ribs. And then so you'll combine the three quarter plywood with the two and a quarter and it'll give you that three inch tall box that we're looking for. Again, using the Pittsburgh clamp. Look at that, beautiful. I am a big fan of mitering. I just think it always looks nicer than butt joints. So I mitered all the corners with my skill saw. Boom, perfect, 45, right there. So after you cut two pieces 48 inches long and two pieces 24 inches long, Went ahead and made the legs, used a compass, and a 2x4, mark the center of your 2x4, round it off, and then just make as many cuts as close to that line as you can. And then wrap some 60 grit sandpaper on a sanding block and smooth it out the best you can. Perfect for a cornhole leg. For the angle on the bottom of your leg, you want to put a mark at 11 and 12 and 9 16 from the top of that curve, draw a straight line down both of them, 12 and, 9, and then connect them. And there's your angle. If you want the top of the cornhole board to sit at right at 12 inches. And then you drill your hole in the center and there's your legs. Next step, is drilling some pocket holes in the sides. That Craig jig right there is 20 bucks at Lowe's. And then just grab a couple cowboy clamps and you're good to go. On the 24 inch pieces, I did three holes. And then on the 48 inch pieces, I did four holes. And that is plenty on this particular project, just make sure you have your pocket hole jig set at three quarters of an inch and then set the collar on your drill bit accordingly. Next step is glue and screw it all together. Uh, glue the bottom and then whenever you screw your pocket hole screws in, that is going to be very, very strong. Don't forget to hit the 45s on your corners with glue also and bring it all together. You want to make sure you line it up. And then I always like to clamp it because sometimes whenever you do screw in those pocket hole screws, it'll fudge one way or the other. So I always try and get it right where I want it and then throw in your pocket hole screws. If you don't already have a bunch of clamps, I know it's frowned upon a lot, but Harbor Freight really does have, for the price and quality, for clamps, you really can find good deals. So once you get all those glued and screwed down, I use those straight edge as clamps and clamp the corners until they dry. And then I put some sandpaper on a block and just get all the edges nice and flush. Start with a 60, then move to a 120, and then eventually to a 220 grit. And that's the ticket. Next up is to drill the six inch hole for the corn bags. So you measure nine inches from the top and then 12 inches from the side. And I'll give you that center. And then use a six inch hole saw, attach to your drill. You gotta make sure, and <laughs> whenever you're drilling this, hold on to that drill. It'll, it'll pull pretty hard. Um, again, I got this six inch hole saw from Harbor Freight. This is probably one of the more expensive deals Besides the power tools, it was $33 for that whole saw bit. But it's a lot better than having to go out and buy a jigsaw if you don't have one. 
So once you get that hole cut out, grab some sandpaper, kind of round off those edges and sand the inside. And then we're going to drill the holes for the legs. Always clamp a piece of wood to the outside whenever you're drilling a hole through or something like this, because if you don't, lots of times it'll splinter out where the drill bit comes out. So there's just a good little tip. And so I went two inches in from the top and then a half inch from the bottom is where I drilled the hole at. You can take clamps off and you got a nice clean hole. <laughs> Everybody likes a nice clean hole. And then I used, I'm painting the outside of this a matte black around the edge. So I just grabbed some matte black carriage bolts and washers. And then you want to make sure on this to use either Loctite or grab a lock nut because that'll make the whole system move as one. So whenever you're opening and closing those legs, it won't unscrew your nut. I just used some channel locks to hold on to that carriage bolt while I use my drill and socket driver to tighten it down. Bingo, bingo. That's how it should work right there. Next up is the decoration part. You can do this however you want. I'm just gonna show you my process because I think it turned out awesome. So I use some frog tape around the perimeter, got it nice and tight, and then just use a razor blade to make sure that the corner is going to be perfect. And then I rolled the sides with a matte black paint. I'll put the link down below for this color here. It is tricorn black. I got it from Sherwin Williams in super paint matte. And they're hard to see there, but I did draw pencil lines from the center of that circle to the corners, the bottom corners, and then use some good tape and gel stain. That's the ticket. If you want to stain something with a design and you don't want it to bleed over, you gotta use gel stain. So you just apply it on real thick and then wait a couple minutes and wipe it off. And then I did the same with this brown color. So you wanna put it on. It, it, this is the first time I've ever used gel stain. I was actually really impressed with it, the way it goes on and the ability to kind of play with it as it goes on, like I said, you just put it on real thick and then wipe it off after a couple minutes and you got those nice, beautiful, clean lines. Now it's time to apply your clear coat. I used a gloss, the Cornhole Regulation website says you want it to be slick, but not so slick that your bags can't stay on the board. So I just used a gloss, polyacrylic. I put two coats on it, sanded with 220 in between coats and got a nice even finish. That's all there is to building a cornhole board on a budget, and it doesn't look like it was built on a budget. There's the final result. I'm really happy with how these turned out. If I missed anything, leave a comment below, and I'll answer your question. Like always, be sure to subscribe, and thanks for watching.